The H96 Pro Stick, or dongle if you like, was a device we reviewed quite a while ago now, and we actually quite liked it. It was one of the cheapest Amlogic S912 devices that was available at the time, and the performance was, it wasn't too bad. Now there was a lot of different variations of this stick, a lot of different motherboards available that have come out over the last couple of months and some of them suffered from overheating problems. The one we had actually performed pretty well, the one we've got just here on screen and we quite liked it, mainly because it was that cheap. Now because it was cheap, there's been a lot of development surrounding it, there's been a lot, quite a few pieces of firmware released. I think Supercellular on it has even released a version of Android TV for this stick. Not 100% on that, I shall leave a link in the description for you guys if I find that firmware for you. But this video is going to show you how to update or even recover your H96 Pro with the Amlogic S912 processor. Now there is also another version of the H96 and that comes with the S905X processor. This video can be used of course to recover or update that stick but just bear in mind that the firmware links in the description are for the S912 version. So to update, recover or upgrade your H96 Pro stick you're going to need to find the appropriate firmware for your device. There is a, a wide range of motherboards available for the H96 Pro so the one I have here, this is my motherboard, this might be totally different to yours at home and you will need to go out and find the appropriate firmware for your H96 Pro stick. I shall leave a link in the description to the, all the image files that I have, but it might be a case of looking on free tab, etc., for the appropriate one. There is actually quite a, you know, a, a growing community around this device because it was so cheap and it's got the that S912 processor inside it. So it's become quite popular. So you shouldn't have too many issues finding the right firmware. Again, I shall do my best to leave as many image files available on our archive for you guys. So before we get started, you need to locate the reset button inside your H96 and this is just on the back of the device. You'll need something quite thin and sharp to actually locate it and get inside there to actually hold it in because we need to hold that in before connecting it to our PC. As usual, you'll need a USB mail to mail cable, plug one end into the PC or laptop, obviously load up USB burner tool. I'm going to show you all this at the end of this tutorial. We've got a nice big long tutorial on how to use Amlogic USB burn tool so hold out for that and then the other end into the H96 Pro and it's quite specific because you've got two USB ports we'll get into the OTG port just this one just here and it should connect obviously holding that reset button while you're doing that and it should connect to USB burning tool. Finally guys, a few more things I need to talk about. There is some license files that some of this firmware for the H96 Pro comes with and you can simply place those license files into USB burning tool and that basically allows USB burning tool to install that firmware onto your H96 Pro. As you can see, it's showing you how to do that now. You just need to find the Amlogic folder, find the license folder and apply the licenses. If your image file does not come with those licenses, then you do not need to worry about it. And finally, guys, if your device is totally and utterly bricked, totally dead, nothing on screen, does not connect to USB burn tool, absolutely no life in it, then take it apart, guys. There's two little pins just located here. Um, there's a, just a nice big picture here, guys. Line it up with your H96 Pro and kind of figure out where it is on your board. And then you need to short these two pins out. Put your USB cable into your device and then shot it out and hopefully USB burner tool will recognize your device and start installing the firmware. Now I'm going to be showing you the Amlogic USB burner tool tutorial. We have dedicated that should cover all Amlogic devices using USB burner tool. So check that out right now. So in today's video I'm going to be covering Amlogic USB burn tool again. I'm going to be covering a few of the points just to go over it and give you guys the best chance of actually recovering any Amlogic boxes that you might want to recover. Now I'm pretty much going to be repeating myself but I want to go over another process that I found actually works better than maybe the first one I did. Now, the first video I did was maybe eight months ago now. So this is kind of a revision of that tutorial. Okay, so first things first, let's install USB burner tool. I'm going to be using version 2.0.8. That's the latest version that I'm aware of at the moment. 
Now once it's installed, all you simply got to do is load it up. Now I don't think I have to explain how to install it. You know, if you ever used Windows before, I'm sure you know how to install a program. Once you've installed it, load it up. The next thing you need to do is you just need to change it to English. And then all we need to do is we need to go and grab something called an image file. That, those image files are specific to your hardware. That's not something I can help you with, find. But just so you know, it is an image file that you need. You can't use zip files with Amalgic Burn until or anything like that. You need image files because they're specific to using this actual tool. So once you've got an image file, what we need to do is we just need to select file and then import image. Now I'm going to be using a old MXQ KitKat image file just for the purposes of this video. So just this one here. And then we just click open. Now it's going to start image checking it, just basically making sure that the that the actual files not corrupt or anything like that. And this will take just a few few seconds. It doesn't take too long really. Now, if you do have issues with actually loading this using, um, you know, maybe the image file comes with an, comes up with an error or something like that, then maybe try a different version of USB burning tool. Maybe try an older version. And it might work because it might it might simply mean that that image file hasn't been compiled properly for that specific version of the USB burning tool. So you can just try an older version and see if it works, or just restart your computer. You know the usual sort of things we have to do to get these things working. So once that's actually loaded up, all we've got to do now is click start. Now the reason I'm doing this this way round. As the previous Amorgic USB Burning Tool tutorial showed you actually having to install the Amorgic device onto the computer first before loading the image file. It's simply because I find this is the best way to actually make it work. There's a lot fewer errors doing it this way. And as well as that, it's a lot simpler, I think. You know, you're not having to connect the device to the computer first. You can just load up the image file, click start, and then you can go on and then connect to your Amalogic device to your computer. So let's switch over now and then let's show you how to connect a Amalogic Android TV box to your computer and then hopefully everything will load up and install perfectly fine. What you'll need is a USB mount and bell 2.0 cable that's capable of data transfer. Now on this MXQ box we've already prepared the KitKat firmware using USB burning tool. All we've got to do now is connect one end of the USB mail to mail cable into your PC and then locate the AV reset button on this MXQ box. However, it might be different for you. You might be using an entirely different Amorgic device. Your reset button might be located underneath or on the side of the box, but usually it's just in a little hole. And what you'll do is you'll just hold in this little reset button using something thin and sharp and then insert the other end of that USB cable. And on screen, you should see if I'd started to install World Cup drivers. Once that's done, it should just start instantly installing that image file we prepared earlier. Certain image files come with replacement license files. It's very simple to do that, just as shown on screen, just find the program x86 and locate the Amlogic folder and in there you'll see the license folder. Just replace it with the provided license file and away you go basically. This will allow you to install that firmware onto your Amlogic device and that's pretty much it. You won't actually require this with every single piece of firmware available but it is one of those things that definitely that you do need for certain pieces of firmware, especially maybe Google firmware like we looked at the S905 just a few weeks ago and that did have a license file that needed replacing for it to be installed on that device. One last thing I really want to touch on is the fact that Amlogic USB Burning Tool is a bit of a pain in the behind. It really is. It's one of those programs you really have to persevere with sometimes to get things working. Say for example an image file just gives you error after error and it doesn't want to load up even on the initial stage then the chances are like use an older version of USB Burning Tool might enable it to work. I know a few versions of KitKat image files won't work on the latest version and it's just a bit weird and to be honest with you it's just a really underdeveloped program 
and again we just have to persevere with it to enable us to actually recover our analogic devices. Hopefully you came across absolutely no errors at all. I can't guarantee that of course. This program is an utter pain in my behind and it can come up with all sorts of different errors and yes that's just the way it is I'm afraid. Hopefully this guide has helped you get your Amorgic Android device working again or just taught you a little bit about how to recover these devices. Anyway, my name is Matthew and you've been watching another video by the MXQ Project. Don't forget to check out our website, mxqproject.com, our Twitter, at MXQ Project, as well as our Facebook group. All those links will be in the description. Thanks for watching guys and we shall see you very, very soon.